What is up guys, Charlie Pang is here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make your very first shirt design in Photoshop completely free. This is gonna be a really fun video, so uh, grab a coffee, grab something to snack on. And by the way, I had way too much caffeine today. It's crazy, I'm just so caffeinated, but I'm pumped to make this video for you guys. Let's go and roll that intro and get started. In today's tutorial, I really wanna keep things super simple, so we're gonna go out on the internet and find some resources to use in Photoshop to make a t-shirt design. And this is especially helpful for some of you that are brand new to making t-shirt designs or you never made one before. I think this video is really gonna help you out. Before we even get into the design, step one is learning Photoshop. If you don't know how to use Photoshop, stop the video, go learn Photoshop because you're gonna have a huge roadblock if you don't understand what I'm saying in this video. I'm not making a full tutorial right now on how to use Photoshop. It's like learning a new language. If you don't understand Photoshop, I'm gonna be speaking in a foreign language too and you're not gonna to understand me so learn it I promise you it's gonna help but anyway now that that's out of the way let's go ahead and get started I have Photoshop CC pulled up what I want to do first is I want to create a new document and I want to prepare this for my t-shirt design process because this is the most important part now if you don't prepare your document correctly you might not make your uh, design the right size for t-shirts and you're gonna have issues later on if that makes sense so in order to fix that we're gonna make sure this is right the first time right we want to go ahead and switch from pixels to inches and we want to make this let's say 14 let's do 14 by 17 just for now that's completely fine and then we want to make the resolution 300 now this is really important because if you make the resolution 72 it's definitely not going to look as good when it's printed so we want our t-shirt design to look great printed right so we want to make sure the resolution is 300 sometimes you can even go past that but I find 300 to be a very very good uh, starting point point. and then we also want to make sure the orientation stays the same and we wanna make sure everything else is the same. Now, on the background contents, we can change the background color right now, and we're actually gonna do that. So we're gonna make the background black because I wanna print this design on a black shirt. Does that make sense? So we wanna go ahead and hit okay, and um, that's gonna act as our shirt color. So once you set everything um, correctly, we can go ahead and uh, hit create. And that's gonna pull up this new window, this new artboard, if you will, and we are ready to start designing. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go find some resources so we can actually make this design, right? So let's go ahead and do that. The first website I'm gonna to use today is unsplash.com and I'm gonna go on there and find an image to use for our design, but we're not gonna to touch that website just yet. We wanna pull up a new tab and we just wanna use Google to search for an image. So I'm actually gonna to go to the actual homepage of Google real quick. So go to Google and let's go ahead and type in, um, let me see, black, grunge background. So type in black grunge background. Trust me, we're gonna find something to use right here. So after doing some digging and typing in some stuff that I want, I found that if I typed in ink roller texture, I found this nice little background that I wanna use. And basically what I wanna do is overlay an image on top of that, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually copy this and we're gonna paste that into Photoshop. So the one that I used is this high resolution rolled ink one. So let's go ahead and copy that. Like I said, we're gonna go back to Photoshop real quick and we're gonna do Command V. All right, and I think it's Control V if you're using a PC, and we wanna resize that real quick. So we're just gonna make that pretty big, about this big. In order to get rid of the white, what we wanna do is we wanna to go to layer one, which is the image that we just pasted in, and we wanna name this uh, background or something like that. So we can name this background, or we can name it grunge background. Let's name it grunge background. We can name it whatever you want. And what we wanna do is we wanna go down to where it says FX, FX and we want to go ahead and change the blending options, okay? When you go to the blending options, it's gonna pop up something called layer style, and what we wanna do is we wanna go to the blend if section where it says this layer. We wanna go all the way to the right where the white is, and we're on the top bar right now, okay? And when you go to that white, we wanna hold an option, and we just wanna drag to the left, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna split that arrow in half, and we want that left half to go to the left about 196, and we wanna take the right part, and we also wanna drag that over. So just like this, and that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna hit okay, and then from here, now we have a background without any white. It's gonna look a little ugly, but trust me, it's gonna come together. So what we wanna do now is we wanna actually right click on this, we wanna convert this to a smart object, and then we wanna make the color overlay white, okay? So we can make it white, gray, whatever color we want, but I'm gonna make it white so it really pops on that black background. And we're gonna go ahead and rasterize this layer style. So now we have just a white grunge background. That's exactly what we wanted. We're ready to move on to the next stages, which is finding our image to overlay on 
on top of this background. I did forget to address one thing real quick before continuing on. If your guys' setup doesn't look the same as mine in Photoshop CC, that's probably because your workspace is different. Now what I'm using is the default workspace and I adjusted a couple things about it or I, I guess you can say I moved things around a little bit. But what I'm using is the default. So go to window real quick on your program, go to workspace and just make sure it's on essentials default. That's exactly what I'm using with my setup. And again, I just moved a couple things around but that's about it. So yours should look pretty similar and that's what I wanted to mention real quick because some of you might be very confused on why mine looks different than yours. Go to unsplash.com, let's go ahead and type in, um, let's just type in New York. We're gonna go for like a street vibe, so New York streets or something like that. So type in New York streets and let's go ahead and find an image that we wanna use on this. Um, this one's pretty cool. I'm not gonna be like too particular on what I use, but um, I'm just gonna find one that I find interesting. But um, we're just gonna find one real quick. Actually, I'm gonna use this one right here by Luke. We're gonna go ahead and download that. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna show in folder and I wanna drag that into Photoshop now. So we're just gonna click that image and we're gonna drag it into Photoshop. Now what I wanna do is resize it. So I'm gonna go up to the height where you see the H right here and I'm just gonna drag to the left and we're just gonna resize it real quick and I'm also going to center it. So we're just gonna keep doing this until it's the proper size. Before we continue on, I wanna rename this photo something. So we're just gonna name it photo by uh, double clicking on the actual thumbnail name. And so it's just photo now, we know exactly where it is. And the next thing we wanna do is force this image inside of that box that's below it. So on the layers palette, photo is sitting first, and then below that we have the grunge background. So now what we wanna do is we wanna force this photo inside of the grunge background. To do that, it's really easy. You just wanna click on photo and you wanna hover in between grunge and background while holding an option, and you just click once and it's gonna force that photo inside of that grunge background that we have. And then from here, we can move it around wherever we want. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit. This is actually a really cool image, I think. So uh, we're gonna, probably move it about right there. It keeps moving because I'm not using a mouse. But anyway, we're gonna move it to about right there. I think that looks quite good. We're doing really good, guys. The next thing I wanna do is find some tape and import it into Photoshop as well. So let's go to Google one more time. I don't know why Google is such a weird word to say sometimes. But anyway, um, I'm going back to Google. We're gonna type in tape, PNG or something like that. And it doesn't have to be a PNG, but I'm gonna try to find one that is PNG. I found a piece of tape that I like and it's by Pixel Scraper. We're just gonna use it for this video. Um, I'm pretty sure you'd have to buy rights to use that. So we're not gonna actually try to make money off this or anything like that. And it's important to know what you have rights to use. And I mentioned that in some of my videos. Um, you can't just go on Google and find anything and use it because you can't get in trouble. Let me zoom in real quick so you guys can see. So I'm taking this marquee tool and I'm just selecting around this little logo here and we're just going to delete it real quick. So I deleted the Pixel Scrapper logo, not the Pixel Scraper logo. I don't know why I said that before, but the Pixel Scrapper logo is deleted. Now I just have the tape and I had renamed it already tape. So I know exactly where it is. Now what I wanna do is do Command T and we're just going to basically rotate it and position it where we want it. So I'm gonna probably put it about right here. I wanted this design to look like it's taped onto the shirt, right? So when we print it, it's gonna look pretty cool. So I'm just gonna put a couple on here. I don't wanna put too many. Um, we're gonna put one right here in this corner as well. So again, we just wanna make sure it's kinda looking like it's taped on there. Um, you don't wanna overdo it, obviously. So I think this looks pretty cool and it's okay to put them in different positions to make it look sloppy because I think that looks cooler. We're gonna put one in this right corner as well, um, just like this. So one in this right corner. Again, this is just to make sure it looks like it's taped on there, right? We're gonna put one on the bottom left as well. I think this looks good for now. Normally I would spend a little bit more time adjusting things, but um, like I said, I think this looks fine for now. So what we wanna do is we wanna select the entire design and we're gonna group it. So I'm basically selecting the very top layer. I'm holding in shift and then selecting the last layer and then hitting command G to group everything. We're gonna name this design. And we're gonna add some text in a little bit. So what I wanna do now is actually resize the whole design, holding in option to resize. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna add some text to the design. We're just gonna type in New York. So what I wanna do is hit T on my keyboard and we're gonna go ahead and zoom in real quick so you can see exactly what I'm doing, just like this. So we're gonna hit T on our keyboard and then we're gonna type out New York in whatever font we have selected at the time. We're gonna resize it. We're gonna change the foreground color on the top left here to white and we're just gonna go ahead and let that be New York, right? We're gonna make it really simple. 
I'm going to use a font that I found online for free. It's called Restico. You guys can go find it right now for free. I'm not gonna link it or anything like that, but just Google Restico and you guys will find it. This is the font I decided to go with. So um, we're gonna go ahead and go to Restico. Now that looks pretty cool, I think. So we're gonna go ahead and resize it. We wanna make it kind of big, not too, too big though. So what I decided to do is actually hide all the tape real quick and I wanna shorten the grunge background. I wanna make it basically a little bit shorter because it's too tall in my opinion and I don't think it's needed. So what I wanna do is hold in Command and I just wanna drag down on this to about right there. I think that looks much better. For some reason to me, it just looked a little sloppy. We can even resize it uh, to the right as well. So we're gonna make it basically wider as well. And I think that looks much better. And then we can recenter it by doing Command A and then using these center options right here. And I think that looks much, much better. We can even shorten the bottom a little bit too and see what that looks like. Yeah, see, I, I don't know, I, I just think that looks so much better. We're gonna duplicate New York in a second, but first what I wanna do is recenter everything, basically move it up a little bit. Now what I wanna do is take New York, and I wanna go ahead and duplicate it, and we're gonna type out city. So just like that. So we're gonna type out city, but I wanna make this in a different font, so I'm gonna change the font to Azo Sans Black, and we're gonna just put that at the bottom here, but I wanna make it a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna double click on it, change the size, and I'm also gonna change the kerning by holding an option, hitting my right arrow key, just like this. We're gonna make it really spaced out, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing, just like this. I think this looks really, really cool. So now what I wanna do is actually change the color of New York. Let's go ahead and try to copy the color of that taxi real quick. And now what I wanna do is go back to the tape idea that we had previously and unhide it, and we're gonna basically replace them because I actually want them on there. I just didn't want all of them on there, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna replace them, and we can even resize them. Maybe they don't need to be that big just so they're less invasive, if that makes sense. So we're gonna resize them real quick, just resize the ones that we did keep. One other thing that I think is gonna help this design out is changing the color of city. So we're gonna actually duplicate the effects of New York and we're gonna add it onto city so we don't have to re-add that. So all you have to do is hold an option, click on the effects and drag it up to the new text line, which is city. And what we're gonna do is uh, go to the color overlay and we just wanna kind of color pick on this design and find a grayish color real quick. So, and now we kind of have the same colors uh, going with this text and I think that looks really good. You guys might think this design is done or you might wanna keep working on it. That's completely up to you. But for now, I'm gonna keep this as is. I think it looks fine. Here it is on a mock-up so you guys can see what it looks like on a shirt. Um, there's so many different decisions that we have to make as designers to figure out what our end uh, goal is, what we want the final design design to look like. And again, that is completely subjective and completely up to you. But um, I am happy with it for the short amount of time that we spent on it. So um, that is it for this video, guys. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comment section below. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button on the video if you liked the video. And also subscribe if you aren't already. I would love to see new faces, guys. I had a blast making this. It was so much fun. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Keep creating, guys. Keep being awesome. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.